701. First order of business is approval of prior minutes. I'll move approval. I'm on, right? Yeah. I'll move approval of the minutes. I did not see any changes necessary. Did anyone else see any? There's a motion. Is there a second? A second. Second. Okay. So I sue. Sue. Hearing no further discussion on the motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Public appearances. Is there any public appearances for any non-agenda item? Ma'am, is your, you can come up to the table here. Are you speaking on any agenda item? I think we wanted to speak on the Stoner Prairie Park. Okay, well, why don't you, did you fill out a request to speak for him? I think I did. It's, I think it's right there. It's probably the piece that's completely unreadable. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. No, no worries. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can never tell with these masks. Uh, uh, the, the, um, thank not, you for the opportunity to speak today. Mark, wait a second. Yeah. What? You're on an agenda item, right? I think I'm on the Stoner Prairie Park, which off the yeah. top of my head is... 5A. Uh, pardon? 5A. That sounds right. We're not there yet. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing on here indicating an agenda item. Yeah, but this, so, this is an agenda item. We're on non-agenda items right now. Right. She's here for an, are you here for an agenda item? I think we're probably here for the Stoner Prairie Park, which I think I'll trust Patrick's. 5A. 5A? 5A. Okay. Okay. I'll we review the agenda and approve yes, this agenda. Yes, right. Okay. Well, let, you can stay there because I don't see anybody else here for speaking uh, until we get down to 5A and then we'll let you have the floor. Is that fine? Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no further appearances for non-public appearances, I'll move on to review and approval of the agenda. I have a question about the agenda before I would move to approve it. Um, I did see that uh, 5C, the Curry Court study, uh, was added yesterday. That would be a little more than 24 hours before this meeting, and then last night, which would be less than 24 hours, then there was nothing added into the packet yet, and then things were added into the packet today, so all, that was less than 24 hours. So I'm just gonna ask the question kind of on the record so that we're clear. Does this meet the legal um, time minimum posting requirements? It is. I understand it's the agenda that needs to be publicly okay. posted. Uh, I'm not. I'm not familiar with any agenda background or, or those kinds of things. So the uh, the uh, the uh, the agenda was amended actually West Wednesday morning and then posted Wednesday morning. So yeah. I, I think we fulfill those and I, I placed it on the website. So. I think so. I just want to kind of have it on the record. We we believe we are more than 24 hours oh, yeah. proposing the agenda, so it's legal for that to be on here. I, I would, I would, yep. Okay. Um, so then I will move approval of the agenda as is. Um, no, I would like to um, amend it such that we take item 5A first on the agenda, change the order. It so is first. 5A, 5A is first? 5A is first. Okay, excuse me. I'll second the motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. There's a second. Is this any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Motion, uh, voting on the motion, all those signified by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carried. 
Item 5A, which is a discussion of action item Stoner Prairie Park proposal. And that's what you're here for? Yes, please. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Janelle Rice. I live at 2755 Jasmine Drive. Fred and I have been there for over 20 years. I was originally made aware of this park project as the alder representing this area, which includes the new William Ryan subdivision and the approved Viridian subdivision. This proposed site also adjoins with existing neighborhoods of Seminole Forest and Lacey Heights. I understand that there was a package submitted to this body and I have reviewed its contents. I appreciate the time and the thought that was put into those deliverables. There are a few questions I have, a few observations and a recommendation. I apologize for the simple map that you have in front of you. It will provide some insight to the unique opportunity that this location has and I'll be glad to review it as time permits or answer questions that go along with it. Has an effort been made to consider what resources already exist in the immediate area? Have we factored the various types of users that will benefit from this park, including adults, park and rec, those who walk dogs, those with small children, those with bike or jog, etc.? Have we considered other factors like security? This project has, had, has a significant opportunity given where it's situated in relationship to other neighborhood parks, bike trails, and more. For example, it's used by Park and Rec for Frisbee, softball, and other scheduled events. As mentioned, it's blocks away from the Badger State Trail. Collectively, there are about 500 homes that would use this park, just factoring the existing and the approved homes of those four neighborhoods. This spot is ideally located for use by many and multiple types of use. For example, a shelter with toilets would illuminate, excuse me, eliminate the porta potty that's currently brought in by Parks and Rec seasonally. And it could also then be used by families with small children, people on bike rides, those who pull over for just a drink of water or to use the restroom, people who are walking their, do their dogs and just wanna give them a little drink, or a little tiny tots that just need to go now. A small effort to consider what is nearby, connect those dots, and how to complement the needs of each of these users would go a very long way on this project. I'd like to suggest a small, short-term task force that's made up of the representatives of each of the neighborhoods, including William Ryan, Seminole Forest, and Lacey Heights, to consider the needs of all four neighborhoods. And I'd also like to ask that task force to consider the different users and perhaps that task force be made up of people that would represent each of those different users. For example, one person who rides bikes, another one who has small children. Currently, only one neighborhood has had an input to this process. I've contacted the leaders of both Seminole Forest and Lazy Heights and neither were aware of this project prior to reaching out to them. They would appreciate a voice in this process. Confirmation of that request from those neighborhood leaders was sent to Park's attention within the past two weeks. In conclusion, I'd like to ask for your approval for a short-term task force made up of one, one to two representatives for each of those neighborhoods to craft a comprehensive plan for Park's approval and input. They would work as a team with input from Scott's and Scott from Park's and other city staff as needed. Once that design phase is completed, it would have served its purpose and it would be dissolved. Thank you for considering our request. Um, do you have any questions about the map or questions of me? Any questions? Yeah, um, could you, uh, apparently you have been involved with the city in the past. Could you just uh, outline that a little bit, please? Yeah, just uh, briefly, I was an alder that represented District 4, and so, um, I sat as part of that body up and through the spring, and that happens to be the same timing when we were looking at the William Ryan project. I was part of the team that ultimately um, worked with Viridian to come to final decisions about how that parcel would be used on the intersection of Lacey Heights and Seminole Highway. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions? I have a question that starts first with Scott and then connects with what you're suggesting. Now, Scott, you've already met with neighbors who've come up with the ideas that, we've, that are presented to us tonight for the first time, right? Okay. Correct. Um, 
I like the idea of, and I, and I think you had answered some questions that I posed just between the two of us about that these neighborhoods would be brought into this planning process. So there's no, I don't think there's a battle that goes on there. One of the questions I had about all of it is that a lot of the lots are not yet sold around the park. And so just, I guess, to be cautious about uh, that, or you say you would be drawing in William Ryan, the developer, the home builder, uh, because having them on the same page is good. Mm -hmm because you want um, to not make decisions that they're going to object to. They're, they're expecting to market these homes and there's going to be, certain things will be there and certain mm -hmm. things will not. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, to me, it all, sounds all good, the ideas that you're proposing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we think that there's, um, I mean, it's just, it feels like there's, there's a synergy of things that are happening with this particular parcel, right? So as I mentioned, literally on the other side of the bike path, so we're talking 10 feet mm -hmm. is an existing park, which you probably know, it's right over by the school. And we've got um, a collection of playground equipment there. And so I look and say, okay, you know, we've, we've got those needs met, right? Now we've got this other parcel, how do we use that? And then I think that we've had, I had some conversations that suggested that we've got a water source that would be coming in that's just poetic, given some other initiatives that are going on in the city. And so there's, there was a discussion of doing a shelter. And I'm thinking, well, when you think about a shelter, if it's, it, it's thoughtful, it doesn't have to be much more expensive. Basic things like having stalls and having water. I mean, the Parks and Recs folks can use that. The people that are out there with little kids can use that, neighborhood gatherings. And so then I kind of started thinking, well, we've got a variety of people that ultimately this could connect to. If you wanted to use the Badger State Trail, this park is maybe three blocks away from that trail. So it just seemed like there was a, a really nice cross section of things that were possible with this location. Agreed. Scott, you want to expand what you have done and what you're certainly just to, proposing your right to kind of go from the beginning. Uh, the, the neighborhood who uh, is adjacent to the the new park, they reached out to me, uh, and they were asking questions: What is the new park going to look like? Those kinds of things. And I says, Well, you know, the, this is where the neighborhood can really be involved in going and, and talking to your neighbors to find out what you might be interested in having within the park facility. Uh, I did share with them the park and open space plan, which really kind of gives us some direction on when we begin to start to, uh, to plan a park, what are some of the concepts and, and themes and ideas that we want to uh, think about when we, when we design the park. And, and certainly this uh, you know, to the point that Dave uh, kind of mentioned to me before the meeting that this, this really is a regional facility. Certainly it's an individual facility, but it's going to connect, you know, to the east um, through a path and also to the west with Quarry Ridge Recreational Area and all of those kinds of things. So there's a lot of, you know, in Seminole, Seminole Glen Park to the north. And, and certainly the idea of, you know, we really don't have the capacity or the resources to duplicate facilities and amenities and, and those kinds of things. So certainly when we begin to start to plan it, we want to be diverse in those activities. Uh, and you do bring up the, the water department. They're working on, a, I believe it's a, a well house uh, that's going to be located at that facility. So we're, we're planning to, uh, the same thing that we did at Hugo Jamestown to provide bathroom facilities and, and things like that. So it, you know, in my conversation and comments with Sue, it's in, in you too, Janelle, it, you know, there's like 500 families that are living in that area. So it, it, it is really going to be a, a heavily used area. Currently we have Ultimate Frisbee out there, uh, which, and they'll go and knock on, you know, knock on the door of the schools and, and things like that. So I, I gave them the task of kind of going out to their neighbors and I don't know how they did it, but they ended up, you know, coming up with some thoughts and ideas as a, as a starting point. And I guess that 
the idea is, and I'd like the idea of a task force, what, what I guess my goal is to come up with a draft plan that we can take out to the public, you know, publicly notice and say, what do you guys think about it? But it, it's really nice instead of the Parks Department coming up with that plan, I, I think it really is useful and, and beneficial if the neighborhood. Uh, You're looking to develop something here to provide some talking points when you get it out in front of well, the and, associations. And, and as Janelle suggested, a task force of all these different neighborhoods coming together and coming up with a draft plan, you know, and then take that draft plan out to the, you know, the community and get comments and, and all of those kinds of things. So it's really, you know, it's their park, it's their community. Uh, you know, they're going to take ownership of it. And, and, and I, I do find too, when they're, they're part of the process, they, if they can rationally understand that you got to do it this way and not that way. And, you know, and with the parks department and maintenance and all of that kind of factored in, it, it really does become a, a plan at the end of the day. Uh, so that was really, like I say, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring that information to the Park Commission to let you know this is what they're kind of thinking about, this is what they're working on, and I did include in my, uh, my comments that this is just the first, you know, the first step. Uh, we do want to, you know, reach out to the adjacent Lacey Heights and Seminole Forest, but, but also, you know, this you know, even with uh, uh, Crescent Crossing, you know, they're talking about a dog park and all of those kinds of things, and those things are in that whole, so that's what we got to factor in. And there's, you know, if you go to the Quarry Ridge Recreational Area, which is bikes, people will drop off their bike and they might come west. And so those are other things that we need to factor in when we're, when we're uh, looking to do the, do the plan. Uh, just a, a bit of timing. The engineering department, they're looking to design that water facility in 2021. So they're looking to do that design work in 2021 and then build it in 2022. So, uh, in, so which, which one, which it, water? It, this is the, uh, the new, I, you know, I don't know if it's a well or a lift station. Oh, sure, or, yeah, we were talking about that, yeah. And, and then what we'll do is, similar to what we did at Hugo Jamestown, they did that and then we'll create, you know, we'll do the bathrooms and all of that so it's one so it's one facility. So they're looking to design that in 2021 and then build it in 2022. So if we can use, you know, 2020 and 2021 to come up with a plan, you know, we can begin to start to start to implement it in 2022 or whatever it might be. So we're just really at the, and like I say, they called me cause it, and I said, man, that's, I appreciate that because I really rely on the neighbors to canvas their, you know, their, their families and find out what they want. Um, and that's, that's kind of the public. And, and typically if you hire someone, a consultant, that'll be the, the public process that they'll go through. Um, so, so what do you see us doing tonight? I, 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 like I say, I just wanted to, to make sure that the Park Commission was aware with what's, what's going on. And certainly if, if you want to take Janelle's recommendation and say, hey, Scott, you know, reach out to these neighborhoods, let's put together a task force and begin to start to start to cuz like i say i don't know the details of who this group got a hold of I, it might have only been 10 or 12 or 15 people in their neighborhood but i i think this is kind of a even even what they provided is a good launch out you know it's just a draft you know we're just working on it and and all of those kinds of things as a as a good starting point so because of some public works projects and some other things well, there's really, you're looking for, toward 2021 for a master plan yeah. of that sort. I, I would say that we could, you know, we could plan it within the, you know, it, it may take a little bit, six to nine months maybe to get it planned and then, you know, go through the public process and get everybody on board and then get it approved. And, you know, in, in, in the dollars, you know, this, this plan can be implemented because the parkland dedication dollars and the park improvement dollars are, are available for, for the development of it, so. Uh, Mark? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, uh, Scott, would typically in a planning process, there would be uh, professionals involved, be it landscape architects, architects, engineers, civil engineers. In addition, um, there might be city staff that would be involved with planning, terms of the parks, it seems to me that the task force is an excellent idea, but I think 
it would be helpful to have some guidance, somebody who, who could summarize the concepts. They need to have some base drawings. They need to be familiar with the planning process. I think it's um, something that is, is, um, has lots of good possibilities. And I do think it's important to think of this park beyond the person who lives within three houses. And it's not that their needs aren't important, but this park needs to work in a multitude of ways, and that's sort of what's uh, suggested. But for you to say to us that you're not sure who was involved in the meetings, when the meetings took place, uh, what the discussion was, I think is a failure of a process to actually record, uh, take notes, be aware of the time, and typically individuals, unless it would be unusual, that would be volunteers and be very helpful on the task force, perhaps wouldn't have those skills and be able to efficiently um, you know, bring things to a conclusion that in then in a public setting that we could make use of. So that's my only concern. It's not to, uh, I think they, the task force will be more successful if there is some professional staff that's involved with the process. And, 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 and I, I agree with everything you said, Dave. Uh, the unfortunate thing is there's no dollars for those additional staff, professional staff, landscape architects, those kinds of staff to come in uh, to help us. And well, why is that, Scott? It seems like we're like a little town out in the middle of nowhere. The, the, those are the rules, you know, the park improvement dollars and the fee in lieu of parkland dedication, there's, there's rules that don't allow us to use those dollars for planning. So in order for us to do planning, we would need to do that through the, through the operating budget or existing staff that we have. Uh, the implementation of the design and the development, those, those activities are eligible to, to use those park improvement and fee in lieu of parkland dedication dollars. And as far as to, your, to respond to the question of, I didn't know who was involved, you, you know, I didn't know, I, I knew who was involved with the small group that I met with, but I don't know who they spoke to. And I guess my point was that we need to talk to more people. It's just, you know, it may have been just a small group that came up with this, with this document. No, I know, and I think just as a process, it's uh, helpful to take, hey, minute, I'm, I'm, take I, minutes and just to have some kind of written record of actually what transpired. Number two, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with a planning process where you would have a design statement. You would do go through various steps. One would be feasibility, and that would be both in physical terms and financial terms. I find it uh, unusual that the city would be undertaking something like this without some professional participation. Um, Again, it could be very reduced, but it's somebody who knows the steps and could actually make the help the task force to be more effective. And, and what we could, in theory, do is put dollars in the operating budget for 2022 and, and see if we couldn't secure some of those professional staff to come in and, and assist us. That, well, that's an option. I would mention that when we discussed the little changing room at the splash pad, we were able to uh, find money quickly to cover uh, something that came in at a higher amount than what had been budgeted. So I think um, it behooves the city to be creative and uh, to think long term and to plant, plant the good roots in the beginning and not try to have to scramble later to straighten things out that hadn't been thought out. That's all. Being an, an area park, um would it be or make sense to have a public hearing at some point when we do develop any master plan? Certainly, certainly. And, and you bring up a good point that, it, it, you know, these, these kinds of amenities, bathrooms, and those kinds of things are really kind of raising, uh, we're going to an area type park, which, which does have a service radius of a half mile. So it, it does, it does provide services for a, a wider radius of, of residents. Is it worthwhile to um, sort of poll people in the area like we've done in some other parks for 
you know, playground equipment and that sort and, of thing, but on a wider scale, perhaps. And, and, and I think that could be one of the things that the task force, you know, I, and, I, and I think what Dave is referring to, I think the task force could be the ones that maybe come up with that, that statement and, and the strategies to try and get it developed and, and all of those kinds of things, you know. So I think, and, and really it's, what we're going to get is a, is a concept plan uh, you know, where this is going to be, where that's going to be, and then once we begin to start to implement that concept plan, then we can utilize those park improvement dollars to, to do the design work and the, all of those kinds of things with the, the specific, uh, the specific uh, amenities. And that, that was really the, you know, I don't mean to belabor it, but that was the, the thing with the Fahey Fields. Uh, we, we didn't have any money to planning, but we were able to use park improvement dollars to do the engineering drawings. So the engineering drawings kind of, depending on where things go, kind of drove the, uh, the park planning process. It was kind of reversed, if you would. Is it, is it too early at this point to develop some sort of timeline or? Uh, like I say, I, you know, general timeline, I think, you know, 2021 for planning and approval, I think is realistic and then begin to start to implement in 2022 It'd be kind of a parallel process with the design of the um, of the uh, water facility at the at the in the area. May I add two more comments? Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so first, I want to thank city staff for starting to connect these dots together. I think if we didn't have a well project that was currently in place, it would be a significantly different cost structure to look at that shelter. But now that we've got that in place, that makes a huge difference in our ability to kind of, you know, say, okay, if we've got that, now what else can we build around that and potentially bring in this shelter for probably significantly less than if we didn't have that infrastructure as part of our planning. Um, some preliminary conversations amongst just a very small number of people that I know are that we kind of need to take a look at those overreaching things first. So what's our shelter going to cost? What are the improvements in that space? What are the, um, the different kinds of users in, that potentially could use that park? And so that we, we consider, you know, a little bit for the, the high level needs like a good shelter, bathroom facility, security cameras in that space to have not only a good facility, but something that can be then appropriately managed. And then within each of those groups, perhaps there's, we look at what we've got and then how do you add to that so that each of those different kinds of users end up getting not only some of what they need, but then there are some shared services that also kind of mix in. Um, I mean, this particular location, as we kind of looked at, at regionally what's going on, it just felt like there were a number of things that were coming together quite nicely from being able to, you know, combine financial resources, service different kinds of folks. Um, the, the dollars that are there seem as though they could do a very, very nice job in, in getting a park that is um, regional in, in what it's capable of. And, you know, that, that whole area is, uh, not only is it growing, but it's established. And so I really think that this is, in my opinion, this is the perfect time to sit down and say, how do we take these pieces and bring them together and put together a plan and move that in a direction that, that really ends up being an outstanding park facility. Sure. This is actually the first time it's been on our agenda. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's even early for us. So we really haven't developed any long-term approach to reaching out yet, but um, I think your comments are well, well stated and uh, something that we'll certainly take into consideration as you've already heard. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Dave. I might add, uh, it might be helpful at some point, not necessarily um, right in the beginning, but to actually have the uh, school board of uh, Verona which has the adjacent schools, to have some um, uh, input from them or at least some discussion of the ideas so that certain assumptions aren't made that um, for some reason aren't very plausible. Um, and it's more not that they have an integral part, but if one of the integral ideas is to actually take advantage of what's there, I think they should be one of the participants or at least certainly be kept informed as it's developed. 
And, and, and certainly I'd, I'd, I'd offer an invitation to any Park Commission member that would be interested and willing to sit on the, on, on the group and kind of help us through a charrette process to, to get the parking, you know, the park planning put together. Yeah, a lot of times, especially with schools, you know, they fence off their own property. I wouldn't put it past them to do that in this case as well, because they did it in um, Lacey Heights when they developed that, and we reached out to them. I, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, but I'm saying that's, it's probably likely that would happen. They, they certainly would be, a, would be a stakeholder and a neighbor, so we definitely would want to reach out to them and find out what their thoughts are. Yeah. And, and, and maybe they have a plan, or maybe they've got some additional development that they're doing on their property adjacent to the park, so we might find some efficiencies there. One of the other groups that I thought would be valuable to at least gain approval would, of course, be Viridian, you know, for the same conversations that we're having with William Ryan. I don't know that they're going to have the bandwidth to actually participate in a task force, but I think if we take that before them and say this is what we're envisioning, I would hope that they would find that um, a beneficial selling tool mm -hmm. and provide us appropriate input maybe on what they're considering. I mean, this is part of their investment as well, and so we want to have that be something that they find attractive also. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scott, what did you want us to well, consider and again, tonight or take a look at? Well, no, no real real decision. It was it was just kind of to let you know what, what we're working on, what we're doing, and, and certainly we've gotten some guidance, and if you feel that a, a task force, uh, which I think would be good, would be a, a good start, we can begin to start to work on that and maybe come up with a mission statement and, and I can talk with planning a little bit to see what what kind of steps would be needed to do a, a park planning charrette or, or those kinds of things and begin to start to work on it. Okay. One other question I, of uh, Janelle. You're in Seminole Forest. I'm in Lacey Heights. In Lacey Heights. And so you know the contacts for your own association. As well as Seminole Forest. Seminole Forest. So you can give that to Scott. He might already have it, but... That's yeah, they've a bit already work both already done. Yeah, they've they've. I reached out to Michael Ercito. He's the president for Seminole Forest. Um, I reached out to Brian Roberts as well as two of the other people that sit on the board for Lacey Heights, and um, they are excited about this opportunity. Okay. And I think that they've both. Um, I asked them to communicate that to Scott because I think that's appropriate protocol is that they should represent the neighborhoods and you know not have a, a hearsay conversation. So I think Scott has communication from both of them confirming that. Before I let you go and we move on, I need to get your name correctly, because I, is it you, Janet? Yeah, I, I, um, I should have been a doctor based on my writing. Uh, Janelle, J-A-N-E-L-L. And the last name is Rice, and I'd be cl glad to clean up the rest of that form for you. I was. What was the last name again? Rice. R I C E. R I C E. Okay. Oh, you have to read it. Oh, <laughs> Scott, you're used to my hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Good night. Um, wait a second. Oh, go ahead. Um, Scott. Just one, one, well, one comment. I like the idea of a task force. Um, one thing that a little bit concerns me, now you're suggesting the developers be part of this task force as well. I, I think what I would suggest is a couple of people from the William Ryan homes, a couple folks from Lacey Heights, a couple from Seminole Forest, and then when they gather that and they've got a plan to run that plan past Viridian so that Viridian has also had at least the opportunity to take a voice in it. I don't see them doing that just because they're more concerned with being a developer than anything else. But I think if we can show them um, a thoughtful plan that, um, that it gives them an opportunity to have a voice in that process because they have an investment, but hopefully they would see some things beyond what they're even aware of in, um, in this park and its ability to meet a variety of different interests, you know, whether that's people with small children, maybe it's adults that are looking for, a, you know, a spot for fitness or a gathering place, maybe it's some people that uh, like to bicycle. There could be 
capabilities that end up being brought together in this park that they wouldn't even have considered in how they can talk to people about the park facilities that are uh, very, very nearby to their new development. I know, um, well, you're, um, you're advocating for developers to be in on this and they would have uh, a lot of strong planning and thinking about their own developments and how they see them developing and, and how the uh, park around there could serve their development. I, in my own opinion anyway, I'd be a little bit cautious on putting too much weight into the developer's proposals. I would rather the heavier uh, weighing of opinions and, and comments be from the residents who live there. I know in the case of uh, Stroner Prairie there, there's not many lots sold, not many houses already. So it could be that the uh, developer is trying to represent their future homeowners may be the only input. Um, it, it just strikes me that developers number one goal is sell lots, sell houses. So if they develop, if they design a park, so to sell lots, you have to kind of weigh that about, is that best for the residents who are going to live there? Does it really um, reflect what the resident, the homeowners, the future homeowners are going to want? In other words, more weight to the actual homeowner residents um, who are there and try and figure out who's going to live there and who can use that. Um, we did all get a, an email from uh, one homeowner who is right around on Scarlet as Scarlet goes to the west and then turns to the north. I forget the name of the street. Um, Kelly and Lucas, we all have an email that we received. And I did talk with them. Um, and they had, uh, we had a conversation about this also. And I believe they were at this meeting that Scott had. Um, so they had some comments about this also, and they were also in favor of more meetings, more public input from the homeowners who are there. Uh, they are one of the first ones in the Stoner Prairie neighborhood. And of course, there's the Lacey Heights, which is established to the east. And um, well, yeah, the Crescent Crossing is over to the west there, not built yet. So this is a very future uh, plan. Um, so one thing that came up from the discussion with them on the phone uh, is, are, did you mention, did you say that you're looking at this as an area park as opposed to smaller neighborhood park versus the larger wide, uh, city-wide scale uh, community park? Well, and, and again, I, I think the, uh, the classifications, you know, certainly would meet the acreage classification, but it's more the function of the, of the park. When you begin to start to get bathrooms and those, it's really kind of classified as an area park. So I, I think this would really fall into a, an area park category, which the service radius is, you know, is a half mile. So, you know, that's going to bring in, and, and it, it really is going to have the regional kinds of facilities with the, the trail, the bikes trail that'll kind of, you know, go through the whole development and, and the bathrooms and, and those kinds of things. So. And I know based on the city well that's going to be on the corner there, it's marked on our one, one of our maps. Um, that there will be a shelter there because it'll be uh, together with the city well. Well, and that, 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 that's kind of the thought is that right. the, the oh, that well sounds, be... That sounds fine, yeah. yeah. Um, it will make a difference though about the amenities, the facilities, the parking uh, availability and such as to whether this is a community park, which let's say for example, may more likely have a parking lot in the park, I which I don't, really like because it uses a park space as opposed to an area park. Uh, off the top of my head, I am not sure what parks that we have around Fitchburg that are actually in the area park classification. I can think of some that might be, and I'm thinking they don't have parking lots in them. And of course, now then the small ones, the neighborhood parks, don't have parking lots. And, um, and, and so it I, makes a difference of which amenities and facilities are in. And, and absolutely, absolutely. And I know with the, uh, you know, the like I say, the, the ultimate Frisbee group, they're, they're there a lot, so they, they'd really benefit from a, a bathroom facility and uh, those kinds of things. So, and, and the school district has really been 
you know, a good partner and allowing them to park in their parking lot and, and those kinds of things. Right, so, they mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, there's some there's some good synergy there. So Yeah, it sounded like there was a good uh, cooperation and, and uh, um, time schedule working out where the school is in session during the day and then in the evenings during the week and on the weekends, the school parking lot is empty. So the people using the park evenings and weekends park in the school parking lot and it didn't sound like there was any conflict there so and that they, sounds good you know and they they are good in in reaching out to me if they're if they're seeing troubles and and then i reach out to them and and we seem to rectify them so mm -hmm. now as far as these various neighborhoods around here on our map that's in green right here there's the the park labeled well this is a, it gets a little bit confusing here there's a small park directly south of scarlet drive on the, the map that's in green? Now, that's existing. That is that completed right now? Well, there is a small a small playground there that certainly could be renovated, okay. if, if you would. But that um, is an established park, and it, would that be the neighborhood park for Lacey Heights? It, I, I would say, yep. That okay. would be the classified as a name. But I, I, again, I, I don't want to get into the, you know, those semantics or, you know, I think it really needs to kind of flow together and... and That's what I'm kind of getting at here is the general idea, in general, is, is each neighborhood has its own neighborhood park and then there are area parks that serve a half a mile, I believe, around. You know, many parks are citywide. Uh, so since there are so many neighborhoods kind of right next to each other, you can walk a few blocks and get into the next neighborhood. I'm wondering how this works out as far as the designation and the planning where to be more strict about it, this one, the little green one there, Stone or Prairie Park, might be considered the neighborhood park for Lacey Heights. And then in this Stone or Prairie area, uh, if this is an area park, that would serve as their neighborhood park. And then when we get over to Crescent Crossing to the west, they have the dog park and the, the very small park that we talked about last month as their neighborhood parks. Um, but I, th I think so they, they're all interchangeable where everyone, and, and that's really... Anyone good. can walk to anywhere, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, in, in theory, uh, you know, this, the area park also serves as a neighborhood park. Right. A community park also serves as right. an area park and a neighborhood park. So there's, there's different, you know, different uses of different classifications. Right, so that's what I kind of want to get is if the idea is that on the green map here, there's a middle area directly, uh, west. well, it's called, it's labeled public park. Yeah, that's west, yeah. Right, um, that's west of the, Stone, the small neighborhood Stoner Prairie Park. And then south of there is another one called Stoner Prairie Park. Yeah. So it, there's three areas here. So one thing I wanted to figure out, are we talking about three separate areas or two no. areas? Is public park part of Stone, the big Stoner Prairie Park? You're making this. You're making this more difficult than it is. Well, I don't know if we got three areas or two. It's areas about. It's about. If you add it all up, it's about ten. A, ten acres of contiguous parkland that we have. Yeah. Uh, you know this. The Stoner Prairie Park to the to the east. It has a small playground in it. Right. We do have the existing ball field, and so that's all that we have. The additional, the public park was the parkland that we received through the parkland dedication. So we wanted to make it contiguous, so we would have a larger. A larger area to and and then if you look to the west, you can see the public pike bike. So that's that's why we're going to connect all the way to Stone or to Quarry Ridge and Quarry Quarry Vista through the whole development. And I should have I should have. There's a whole Stoner Prairie neighborhood land use plan that I should have probably provided in this to give you the the, the overall picture. This is yeah. The, that's one thing that would help on this because yeah. we're looking at kind of too zoomed in on an area. Uh, Lucas actually sent me uh, a map that is a somewhat wider area that kind of goes as far west into the Crescent Crossing. Yep. Yep. We need to see the whole area more than I agree. I agree. too small. And, 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 that, and, and, and that'll be included in the, like when we get the committee together, it's not, it, certainly we're gonna work on this specific area, but how is that going to tie into regionally and uses and all of those kinds of things, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, another it's, it's always been our effort to, as we accumulate lands, to c accumulate them in a contiguous manner. And that park on Scarlet was the neighborhood park for Lacey Heights development back in the, the 90s. 
And the, the, way, the reason it was chosen there was simply because the parkland, or not, I mean, the school property was there, and it was, the thinking was that there would be some advantages to um, having them connected there. It was never known, of course, what was going to occur beyond that, but um, I, I like to see exactly the way we're doing it. It's um, to make one big park out of it, because Lacey Heights, that was a pretty small park, and really what it amounts to is more as a tot lot, but, and it's fenced off from the school, so it's one thing we need to find out, too, whether they're going to, um, the school wants that fenced off or not, which we won't know until yeah, we I, communicate with them. Um, I think we may need a more formal agreement with the school that it's okay to use their parking lot in off-school hours. Um, Stoner Prairie Park there, the original one in Lacey Heights, has some street access from Scarlet Drive. The public park area has some access on, I guess it's Street 3 or whatever that is. Uh, the the um, ball field part of Stoner Prairie Park is landlocked by itself, and so the access is either from around that curve on what seems to be Street 3, unnamed yet, and then going through a couple of access routes between lots from whatever the north-south street is that doesn't have any name. Uh, so I, I would you know, not like to see a parking lot put in here anywhere and count on street parking, but make sure that it's accessible. Why don't we wait until we get yeah. more plans firmed up? Yeah. You, know, I, you know, I share some of your concerns, but uh, without seeing it all together, it's and, difficult and, to talk about. And, and what I'll do is I'll begin to start to form that, that task force and, and begin to start to, to work towards that end if, if that's what, you, you could certainly make a motion and, and second it and give me that direction to do that, so that, that would make some sense. And you raise, raise some good points, and I think they're well taken anyway. And, and, and those will really be in the charrette, though, that'll be, those will all be discussed in the park planning process uh, once we get there. Is there any other discussion on this item? I would like the Park Commission here to be informed of when these neighborhood meetings, charrettes, whatever it is. I, like scheduled. I said, I'm looking for I'm looking for a Park Commission member who yeah. wants to spear this uh, this spearhead this this park planning process. <laughs> In any point. I, I would at least like to know when the meetings are held. I have a yeah. I'll yeah. I'll keep yes. everybody posted. No no doubt. And and it'd Thank be great you. if you could show up. You know. You know, I'm not being mean or anything, but but it, you know, to to come in when you when you get a chance, that'd be that'd be great. We just have to know when they are. I will. I'll I, make. As sure. far as I know, here you met with the neighbors back in June, I believe. We didn't know anything about that. I, you know, I. Sorry about that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you. Um, I think we've reached the point where we'll come back with, at another time, and uh, we'll keep you posted. I appreciate that. Okay. Have a good evening. Stay well. Thank you. All right. Um, did, did do you want to make a, a motion in a second and kind of give me that give me that task of creating that task force? Say that again. Everything's muffled with these things. I'm it? just wondering if, if you'd like to make a motion in a second to assign to put a task force together to begin to start the, the park planning process for this. That would be, that'd be good. Do you want that in a vote? Please. I mean, we can do Please. that. Yeah. Sue, are you in Lacey Heights, did you say? Um, not far in Wildwood. So we'd be within that half mile do you area, wanna, too. Are you suggesting we come up with a... Proposed no, you're participants, just, you're, or just the for, just the thought of the yeah, a, just, a just, motion to authorize. Yeah, I tell right. you, uh, I okay. The formation got to got it. form a task force and continue working on this project. Okay. Second. Is there a second? There's a second. Yeah. Okay. Voting. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Just also to mention that Katie McDonald also lives right close to there as well. Our other member. As she can wave to us on the screen there. 
There's Katie. Okay. I would be interested in attending the task force meetings. I'm not sure that I want to be spearheading the entire <laughs> task force, so. Okay. Fair enough. Sarah. I, I probably go through this area three or four times a week, so I would definitely be interested in being involved. All right. Voting on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Scott. Is that something that you think you'll come back at the next meeting with or uh, probably not, but but I'll I'll start working on it. We'll we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Let's move on. New park names. That ought to be fun. Well, and, and you know, I did reach out to uh, some of the developers. I, I wasn't successful in, in getting anyone to give me any, any, uh, any feedback. Um, so I guess there are a couple that I would want to roll through and see how you how you feel about it and again the process is basically what i would do is i would publicly notice the the names that we select and it, would, it needs to be out in the public for 60 days and then if we don't receive any responses back then we would make a motion to the to the common council and then the park names would be would be approved um patrick did you have yeah a couple questions about this there are some names on here that, as far as I know, have already been approved. For example, Pinnacle Park was specifically requested by fiduciary who developed the um, apartments right on the north side. They asked for that name, and as far as I know, that's approved already. So then that one's done, yep. Okay, Good. and Good. same for um, Sunnyside Dog Park. The Dog Park Advocates worked that out with the former owners of the... Um, Chicken farm. So that yep, so that one would be that uh, one's approved also, isn't it? I, I would say I I'm 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 good with yeah, that. So I wondered why they were on here. Well, the, these are the new these are the new parklands that we have, and and I guess that's what I wanted to do is kind of go through the names to see how you feel about each of those, uh, and yeah. go ahead. And then, uh, Fahey Fields is on here now. I don't know if you mean some small park out in to the west, west of Magaw not the western addition to Magaw. I don't know, I'm not sure if there's another park area like way over on the west side of Fahey Fields. No, nope, nope, this is this is the but, this is where the pickleball courts and okay, all of those. Okay, that I actually even suggested this at some meeting years ago about whether, you know, Dave Fahey and such wanted it to be named after their family, named Fahey Fields Park. Nobody jumped on that, nobody spoke he, up on he that. He contacted me and he said that would be fine. Well, no, okay, nobody said anything that way, and as far as I've understood, that is not Fahey Fields Park. That is the western edition of Magaw Park. It's part of Magaw Park. So this so is it our, doesn't have its own name. But is the, but this is the opportunity to, to affirm no, or change, uh, right? Is that why we're here and talking about it, Scott? We, we certainly, yeah. I, certainly. Yeah. I think that is a problem because if you call it Fahey Fields Park. That makes it a neighborhood park and ineligible for community park yeah. funds. It's kind of confusing, I agree. If it's part of Magaw Park, which it uses the parking lot of Magaw Park, it's the, at, at, in addition onto Magaw Park, you walk from the parking lot over into this area, nobody, you know, and all along has asked for, including the former owner of the cornfield, uh, that it be named Fahey Field. So I think this gets into some trouble and some confusion about coming up with that name there. So are you McGaw Park Western Edition? Is that what you're? Um, perhaps I could suggest uh, being a newcomer to Fitchburg, having lived here for five years, I find it quite confusing as to many different names for essentially, let's just take uh, McGaw. Then we have right next to it, I think a budding Johnston Park or something. Right. And now we're going to call another thing Fahey because that's the developer's name? Well, in, in that... I, wait, if I could finish. To me, a more normal process would be as parks grow, call it one name and have it be less confusing. Certainly, um, to, to 
have the need to put so something which is such an artificial name, the name of the person who owned the field, if it wasn't requested or wasn't discussed, and it's right next to McGaw, just call it McGaw. I don't, do you see a problem with that, Scott? I, the only, I only other alternative to that would be simply to, to recognize pin, the pickleball courts, you know, like we do the baseball. You know, baseballs are La Bob Langer Field in honor of Bob Langer. I don't know how many people know him, but well, he's, he's a name that goes back to formation of baseball in Fitchburg and everything. But, you know, I agree it should be McGaw Park. You know, it's not... Yeah, this it, part is so a different name than McGaw, but you could recognize the area as Fahey Fields without renaming the whole park. You know, I don't know if you follow that, but I I I, I do, and and again, I think you know it, it's difficult. S. Johnson, he, and I don't know which one came first. McGaw. No, I do actually. I'd like to comment on that. Uh, Johnson Park is a neighborhood park. It's actually the neighborhood park for my neighborhood, Tarpleywick Hills. That was established back in the 60s. In the 80s, the McGaw Farm was bought and dedicated as McGaw Park. That's why there's a difference. Johnson Park was there 20 years before McGaw Park ever and, came and, along. And Fahey Fields is a neighborhood park for the Fahey Fields development. Well, that's the question here. Not the Western Edition. I've always, you know, taken that the part west of immediately adjacent to McGaw Park going out west into that cornfield was always supposed to be an addition to the McGaw Park. Not a separate named, not a separate park, and, and, not and a neighborhood park. Yeah, I, I, and actually there is some other uh, smaller areas within that, within that Fahey Fields development that we could certainly, you know, recognize the Fahey name and, and things right. on. I think there could be. I think over in the northwest part of Fahey Fields is an area around the big tree or something that oh, they have also dedicated. Yeah. If I, that I, one is going to be named Fahey Fields Park, that's fine. I, it's not really any different than Sterling Meadows and subdivision, which was their park was, dedication was part of McKee Park. But we didn't call it Sterling Meadows Park. We called it McKee Park. Oh, that, 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 that seems to make sense, yeah. That makes sense. I have a comment yep. or two. Um, I like the idea of consolidating the names of the larger park, especially if it might tie into how the park is funded or categorized as the community park. Um, and I, umpteen years ago, I was uh, in the Cedarburg Parks and Recreation Commission for a short while, and they had a policy there that um, most parks were not named after the last person who owned the land. The only time their name got attached to it is if they gave land to the city for a park over and above the, the park land and park fee development requirements. And so um, I know that these names mean something to, you know, it, it, it does give a sense of history, but as the years go on, um, maybe there's something more appropriate to the area um, uh, about our natural landscape here, Native, Native Americans who lived here before us, things that are, can also be considered more educational on a broader scale to, to kids and, and people moving to the region. So that's my two cents. That is actually part of the rules of naming parks. There's a, it's yep, not in our yep. packet, right? But no. there's a set of rules about how the parks are supposed to be given names and it's based on history or something of the area. There's criteria like that. Yeah. And, and, and maybe if we could, if we could kind of go through this comprehensive list and then I could gather some comments on each of them to see, to see what your thoughts are. Because there might be some that I'll be able to just do a, a public notice on right now. There's gonna be others that I'm not gonna be able to do anything yet. But you know, we've got a pretty, pretty big list here. So if we could go through them and, and see. Yeah. That's what I was going to suggest. Well, what, but since we were on this one so much, I didn't stop it. <laughs> what about um, querying neighbors in the area for any any? Well, what, see what we what we do is we start the process. We put a name to it, and then we allow for sixty day oh, okay. sixty day comment back to see what we hear and all of those. So this is really just okay. trying to get the 
get the ball rolling, but there might be some here that you identified that, you know, we're good with, that we can get the sign ordered and get it, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Why don't we start at the top since we that, that'd be helpful. pretty much... So the first one is... Uh, fields is, as far the, as we did. Yeah, the first one is the gold edition. And that... That's off of Sain Road, if, if you recall. The, that was the, the part that was purchased with the money that we received from the view. Yes, fiduciary. Yep, yep. And that's the one with some trails through that that were mapped out by a couple of Boy Scout, um, yep. Eagle it, Scouts. And, and it actually relates to R-172.20. Uh, and, and actually, if you went into your packet, oh no, I didn't include it in your packet. If you. What I did is I provided some additional material for you tonight. Um, you know, that's, that's the other thing that I, I really didn't. Let, let's, in the interest of time, let's just go through those, through what we've got here and what ones you're comfortable with. The other ones, I might come back to you next month with more details on where they are and all of those kinds of things. So I'll kind of rely on you, Mark, and, and Pat for the experience of of these, so, you know, the gold edition. The gold edition, as far as I know, does not front on, on South Sain. It's, mm -hmm. in, it's the north end of the Greenfield Park neighborhood. Yeah. You have to be in the neighborhood to get and, to and it. And I think that, I think this was, there's, so we can, we can make, we'll just pass that one for yeah, now. Yeah, I don't, just, no, don't well, write that. Wait, yeah. wait, if we could go back, could somebody explain the logic of the name gold edition? The name of the developer. The name of a developer for a park that contributed an excess amount of money to the city or no. just allowed the city to rezone his land and develop it? That would be more accurate, yeah. 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 Well, I find really that park. Um, not uh, acceptable. Right. Period. Yeah. Well, so let's, let's, let's move on. So we'll, we'll do more discussion on the Gold Edition at a future okay. meeting. So and, Nine Springs. Yeah, and those... You know, and again, I, you know, I, I apologize. I should provide some additional information as far as where these are, and and what their, what their, the locations of them. You're saying Nine Springs area, and then. Yeah, well, there's there's a Syene Road Park. There's right. a, there's a couple different parks within that within that Syene or within that Nine Springs that whole development. So that one might be better served at a future meeting. Are they connected though, or? No, 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 no so. but they're all. They're all within the Nine Springs development. Yeah. There's like four, there's five, one, two, three, there's four different parks within that whole. So what I need to do is I need okay. to do a better job of explaining where they are and, and all of those kinds of things. So you're thinking of four different names then, right? Yeah, so we'll we'll kind of pass on that. Well, what, just one little comment on the Syene Road Park right there. On South Syene, it's directly on the east side. Yeah. Uh, it is bordered by a lot of private houses along on its east side there, so the access is only from Sain, which is a kind of a busy road. The only comment that I want to throw in here, this is not a good name, but there was a rodeo uh, back up, up into the 80s that used to be all out on the east side. Yeah, I like that, yeah, yeah, I like that, I like that. Holmes property, right? No, uh, I, I yeah, heard, it is. I, I like that, I, well, you know, the history of the, the history of it and- And actually, in you know why it's Syene Road George, Park? George it's Holmes. On Syene Road. <laughs> that's George why it's Holmes named Syene Road Park. Rodeo that day. Yes, that's it. Yeah. So I mean, no, I like I'm not that. real crazy about the name Rodeo Park, but it's something of the history. And they're in in one of the Riva apartment buildings in their community room. They have a big, at least four foot square map oh, or like a picture that. on the wall, and I have a copy of that picture yeah. of the rodeo that actually went. Uh, it took place in that area. See, and, and, and I, I would love even someone to write a little history and put it on a bronze plaque and, and, and put it on a rock there. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's before I'm just saying, I haven't been you know, that, that That's the stuff that's cool that, that really yeah. needs to... Uh, Scott, is there any um, interchange with the Landmarks Commission in the city and the Historic Society as to picking I, of the names? No, but that's a good point. That's, um, that's, then I would ask, is, uh, is it Prima Raven and Uptown Crossing, are those also names of apartment buildings? 
the, 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 yes. Yeah, that's, so like I say, this is just a, a starting okay. point. I, I just wanted to kind of get a list of all of them, and, and we, can, we can discuss each of them more individually. Okay, and There's so ba basically you've picked some simple identifiers yeah. as, I, I as a starting point. I, I did, and, yeah, I, right. I, and I, reached out, I reached out to the developers to see if they had any name suggestions that they might want just to begin to start the process. And again, it, once we decide what it is, it goes out for 60 days, and then people have a, the ability to respond and all of those kinds of things. So yep. it's, That would be Avanti developers in this yep. case. And this, this area here that that one is about is in between the Prima apartment building and the Raven apartment okay. building. So very much should not be named after those apartment buildings. Well, then I'll, I'll task you with uh, coming up with some names for them. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a difficult. King James Way. Any, any history on King James Way Park? Is that the one where the two, well, let's see now, one house was bought yep, and turned into correct. a park? Yep. And the long term is to yep. get the other house slot and correct. add on? Correct. Uh -huh. And it just happens to be on King James it Way. Does. It does. So it that's does. why I just got that name right it now. Does. It was a. It's more of a top lot, and I, I don't know if I'd have any problem naming it that. Or, you know. And, and I'm and I'm trying to I'm I'm at a loss for words. I you know as far as names and things like that. I I'm just trying to get get them identified names so we can put you know get some signs on them is really what we're after. I, uh, I dropped the way though you know just called King James. You know. Well, so. I, yeah, I still I think the suggestion to ask um, talk about the history further back than the last person who owned the land, mm -hmm. which is then the developer. Um, uh, and Scott, um, David's suggestion then to, to reach out to the uh, Historic Society, et cetera. I, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't name King James Way Park King James Way Park, but um, I was thinking just more broadly bringing in concepts of our, the natural history of the area. And, and maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll identify the areas and then maybe come up with a couple potential names and then just... You know, it, it may be a little... I mean, maybe landmarks will say they don't have time to answer our questions, but maybe they Pin, do. Pinnac Pinnacle Park, where that one's kind of decided, right? Uh, as far as I know. Uh, what, what, fiduciary would probably be upset if we proposed changing the name. Uh, they wanted that name for some reason. So Pinnacle Park? Pinnacle Park. Uh, uh, just to clarify, Pinnacle is Park that is also the same the name as the development so company, the real Which estate company? There's a Pinnacle Real Estate Company. Yeah, boy, I don't. Uh, what? I don't know if it is. He he's asking whether that's the name of the company that that developed it. No, fiduciary. Fiduciary developed it. They oh, have okay. they have the the view on the north side of Post Road, yeah. and this is a little triangle yeah. that was probably unbuildable by them on the south side of Post Road. This is on the east east of Fish Hatchery, and so um, they asked is. for the name Pinnacle, and they wanted their apartment buildings all facing, looking to the south, looking out into this park. So they asked for this name. As far as I know, that's been approved. Still named after an Lisa. apartment, though, isn't it? Hmm? Isn't there an apartment named Pinnacle? Uh, I don't know. I just know the, the whatever it is, three or five or something apartment buildings are called The View. Right. Used to be an athletic club in Fitchburg called that, too. So I don't know if it still does. Over by Fire Station 1. A what? Uh, there used to be an athletic club oh. called Pinnacle in Fitchburg. Um, um, near Fire Station One. I don't think that's. I don't know if they problem using the changed their word. name or what happened to it. I I don't have the current history, but just so you know, you're aware that there's. Well, I think we'll I think we'll go with Pinnacle Park as one. We'll get that publicly noticed. Uh, I I don't like that idea because I think it's already named and approved. Oh, so we just okay okay okay. If, if everyone it's one that. off. Well, one or two are off of this list, as far as I see. Let, let's go. Pinnacle is going to come off. How about Cory Vista? In the Cory Vista subdivision, there, way over uh, east or no, west end of Lacey, and then it's the east side of Fitzrona. Is there just one, or is there two small parks in that area? Just, I, just, just one. I thought there was. Is there going to be a second? Way back. No. No. Well. No. There, there's additions. As, as there's the quarry, a shuts down there was another area to the east oh there was there was there was there was that's not developed yet right so 
I mean, maybe as a just first first Corey, shot approval. Corey Vista first East, shot Corey, suggestion. Vi Corey right. Vista East, and Corey Vista right. West. <laughs> yeah, well, this would be Corey Vista West right here. I mean, for nothing better. So are we Corey Vista West? And and again, we we'll we'll send them out there, and and people will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a land formation. I'm happy. <laughs> Sunny Sunnyside Park. I think that one's yeah. done. That one's yeah. definitely done. Um, and then while well, we've got Terravesa, you know, we got Terravesa South, which we've been working on. Terravesa North, which is along the road to the east, and then we've got that natural area. Hmm. And, and Terravesa is the developer's name. Terravesa is a, well, well Terravesa is the name of the development. Uh, the development. Uh, right, it's what Phil Savium has named his subdivision. Terravesa, yeah. and, and that would seem to make, yeah. seem to make sense to me. I mean, it's not advertising. I mean, if it said Phil, Phil Savium Realty Park, then I have an <laughs> yeah. issue, <laughs> but it doesn't. That's a problem. It's, yeah, I don't know of any history or anything in the area uh, to go on. Very good. Uh, so what with that one I'll uh, I think what I'll do is I'll come back to you in November with the ones that I don't know about to, to kind of make sure that you guys are good with it to identify where they are and uh, we can maybe talk about them a little bit more and before I publicly notice them uh, Fahey Fields only if it's the yeah. west side so of we're, the subdivision yep, McGaw West uh, wait wait no no only if it's the west side of the Fahey Field subdivision. I, I know. So are we just going to call that McGaw Western Edition? Well, just, no, it's McGaw. Just call it McGaw. Oh. Just call it McGaw? Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you want to use Fahey Fields for the name of the... The, the small, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the court's fine, but I'm not even sure I'd do that, but... Uh, well, and, uh, and now we've got the, the Stoner Prairie Park expansion, so I think that would just end up being Stoner Prairie. Um, and then certainly in Crescent Crossing. Yep, and Stoner Prairie, you're talking about that as a Stoner Prairie area park. Yep, area park, right. Okay, as opposed to the Stoner Prairie Park that is in Lacey Heights. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that the whole thing would be Stoner. Okay, like the, would they sort of meld together and the yep. little former neighborhood park established years ago would become part of the area park? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. you know, it I would, already is. I really. would name the whole thing one park. Stoner Park, Stoner Prairie Park. I, right? What is its current name? Is it Lacey Park? Lacey no, Heights it's, Park? It's Stoner Prairie Park. It's on well, the, that green page on the map. The little, yeah, it's small, oh. little tot lot, but that was the only thing there that was a park and adjacent to the school, so. And then the, well, the other one is Crescent Crossing. Uh, you remember we've got the dog park and that neighborhood park. I haven't or that smaller, I haven't got a name from, unless you guys have a, a suggestion, I don't really have. <laughs> Voltage Park. <huh? laughs> well, Voltage there you park. go. <laughs> Power Just line. take your finger up in there. <laughs> well, and then the last well, one that, is, That's one where there is nobody living there yet because they don't even have streets in. And then the last one is the Nine Springs Golf Course Hub North. But we'll, we'll kind of wait a little bit on that one. So that, that, that helps me actually moved it forward a little bit, which is good. So no real action on that one, I don't think, on that agenda item. So there's really no action at this point on any of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue to work on that. Yeah, good first start. Yes, thank you, yep. Mark. I agree, I agree. All right, moving on to communications. Uh, no, there's no. Oh, wait, so we got one more added. added here. 5C, excuse me. Resolution R17220, authorizing acceptance of proposal from uh, AE2S for stormwater management study for the Curry Court and Old Indian Trails area. And, and what I did do uh, for your benefit is I, I did include, I gave you some additional information, uh, which is basically, uh, do I have a copy of that? Uh, the, the, the first page, or the first packet was the RFP that the, uh, that the engineering department put out for this 
uh, for this project. And I did highlight the reason that it, it, it's before the Park Commission is because actually the Curry Court, we have a Curry Court Park, and then we also have the Gold Edition Park, uh, and that's the second group of, of, of uh, maps that I provided you. The study area, if you look at figure A1 on that green one, uh, the study area, I did highlight the gold edition on the bottom. And then also Curry Court Park is highlighted to the, to the north. So those two park facilities are included in this stormwater study. What? Planning area. What, uh, what map are you? If I gave you the the first handout was the uh, the RFP. Yeah. Uh, and then the second handout was was the maps, which kind of identifies the study areas. No, not not that one. Looks like the, 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 this one. I saw it somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is now. Well, there might be one right next to you, Patrick, right here. When did this pop up on our radar anyway? Do you... I don't remember any past discussion on it, that's all. Well, and actually what I did do is I, I, I did, there was a question. I did, I did make you aware of the RFP that was going out last month, and then I sent you some additional information, which was basically this RFP to let you know that it was happening. Oh. Uh, and... Within the RFP, there's, there's a couple uh, scope of the work. Basically, what they're going to do is they're going to evaluate that whole area for stormwater and come up with some recommendations to try and improve the stormwater in that area. And, the, the, you know, the Park Commission is, is involved in that part of the study area. There is some park property that's included in there. And actually, the Gold Edition Park that we have is wet. There, you know, that it really does need to be drained out. Uh, so I think what, what this study is going to do is actually going to provide some strategies and ideas to improve the stormwater in that area, which a byproduct of that is going to make this park a little bit more usable. Is this an accessible project? Is this what? Is this project going to be assessed to the property owners? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you, Mark. I, I, I just know it's an initiative that the stormwater engineering group is, is taking because of the stormwater issues in this neighborhood. Okay. And, and I, I just wanted to make you guys aware of it because it, it does include two of your, two of your parks. Okay. Um, so that, uh, you know, so what, what this resolution does is they went through a, a process in order to hire a firm to do this work. So this is what they're doing is they're approving this firm to do the work. Just a question here. Yeah. When we're talking about the Curry Court Park. Is that officially named Curry Court Park? It's not on our list of park names. It, it is Curry Court Park. Has yeah. it been approved yep. as that name? It, it's, I got a sign on it, so I know, I it, it's it. Curry Court Park. <laughs> oh, okay. Just wanted, you know, when we're talking about park names and all these things. Yep. No, that's Wasn't Curry. sure if that would have been approved already. Am I to assume this wasn't a budgeted item? I, I, I don't know, Mark. I, like I say, oh. this, is, this is originated from the, the stormwater engineering department. And when I found out that it included the gold edition and... Okay. And Curry Court Park, I said, hey, we, you know, we got we to gotta take this to the Park Commission to make sure they're, and we'll, we're going to receive some benefit because, like I say, this, this parcel is probably about 18 acres, and half of it is designated as wetland, but there's about eight acres that are upland, but those uplands are, are not usable just because the, the water doesn't, doesn't drain through there. So this is going to benefit that park to make it a little bit more usable so, to, our, to, our, to the neighborhood there. So it's good to know what's driving it from, you know, what... Yeah. what and it really, uh, and it, it actually... Put this on our table and... It says, uh, you know, background, uh, the Curry Court and Old Indian Trail neighborhoods, that's, um, that's where uh, the Gold Edition and have dealt with water issues for the past 10 years in the area outlined in, a, in, in A1, which is that map. Um, 
These water issues have become more pronounced since 2017 as we experience more extreme rainfall, events, higher groundwater table, um, that kind of, the purpose of the study is to determine the best way to address water concern within the neighborhood. So that's what that study is going to do. Uh, and the scope of the work is they're gonna have a kickoff meeting, they're gonna have a couple public meetings, do a feasibility analysis, uh, they'll present it to the Common Council. I'll, I'll get them to try and come to the, hopefully we can get somebody to come to the Park Commission to talk about it. Uh, and then they'll just come up with an implementation plan to try and deal with, with some of the issues. Uh, yeah, I wanted to mention in our uh, last month's meeting minutes, here somewhere, um, we actually requested, it's noted in our minutes, that we requested to hear from someone in public works um, about this or something like that. And so they apparently have not chosen to join us yet? Well, this was, uh, I kind of caught this at the end and that's why the uh, budget was amended and I actually was able to get it referred to the Park Commission. It, it was gonna go without being referred to the Park Commission, so I I'm very glad I quick you... scrambled because right. I, I knew you guys would want to hear about it and know what's going on, so I... I sort of an FIYI at this point. It, it is, but it, it really is. Well, and, and you, you know, you're, you're on the referral sheet, so, yep. you know, I need you to take action, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you understood what the, what the work is. I'm very glad you grabbed this and added this onto the Park Commission's yeah. agenda. In yeah. last month's minutes here, under 6B, Curry Court Gold Edition Study, uh, Scott informed the Commission Public Works is working on a feasibility study for the Curry Court and Indian right. Trail area. The study does include two park areas, Curry Court and the Gold and Golden Edition, not exactly right. The Park Commission requested a visit from the Engineering Department in the near future to discuss in more details this work. I, I, I so hopefully they will come at some point. Well, th that's what I'm going to try and, and yes, see but, if we can't, if but, we can't, uh, can't uh, get them to, to come. And it isn't exactly in the... Um, referral page in this section here but i see as you just noted it is in the scope here about uh kickoff meeting and then two public meetings i am very interested in when those meetings will be held this area here actually is included in the very wide area that belongs to my own neighborhood association so i've been aware of this well, flooding for decades and, and, and I might suggest I'll, I'll try to do the best that I can to, to make you aware but you may you may want to reach out as your neighborhood association to to make sure that you're on the list to, to, to get notified when those things happen are you looking for a vote on this one? Well, yep it, it was referred to you and again what what this referral is is to hire the firm to do the work um, you know it's not the final product or anything like that and and if you look through you know, it looks like they... Um... Well, it's asking for a, a budget thing which may require two-thirds vote by the Common Council. Right. Well, and that might be a, that might be a budget amendment or, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, one, two, th it looks like they had five proposals. They interviewed the, the two lowest and they went with the second lowest uh, proposal. Well, yeah, why is that? Well, here, it says... Um, I read it. Works. It doesn't What's seem that? to explain it. I can only read the note. I, the Public Works Department followed a number. Uh, well, and actually, it would be in the. I think. Where did it? Um, uh, next page, page twenty-one on there, or page five of nine, whatever you're looking at. It says, uh, and evaluated. A review committee consisting of four right. city engineers reviewed the proposals and evaluated them based on a set of criteria as outlined in the RFP. The DPW and env env uh, environmental engineer asked clarifying questions from the firms who submitted the top two proposals. Uh, AE2S was chosen as a result of this selection process. Minor revisions were made to the regional scope, such as including investigation of a sump pump collection system. So that's the expert rationale for recommendation of, of the uh, contractor. So do you know, did, it says here, uh, submitted the top two proposals. Was it a thing of, it's a two lowest hey, give us a proposal, whatever you think, no, and it, then it they, was, uh, AE, rather it, than by like the amount? A, it looks like it was a two, 
I, I really don't know. Okay, because AE2S is not the lowest. No. Rukert Melky was the lowest, yeah. but they were not one of the two that was. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what they compared. The process that they went through. Okay, it's a little confusing there. Somehow, you know, Mars EOR is the sec, almost the second, well, almost the highest by a couple hundred dollars below the very highest. You know, and, and again, these are complicated to take the lowest. Yeah, these are. Has to be a good reason. Yeah, I'm just looking for understanding of why, you know, rather than nine, what is it, eight or nine thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars lower, uh, they didn't pick that one. So what their criteria was. And they 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 explained it in their rationale for recommendation of so, or source source. Not real clearly. Okay. Well, my take on this is we should just look at it from a park standpoint and let the budgetary, budgetary issues be resolved by finance and the Common Council. And so it really isn't, isn't a concern of parks necessarily, although I'm always concerned about financial things, but so I don't want to give the impression I'm not, but I don't see where it falls upon us to dissect all of that. We don't have the public works, or the uh, yeah, public works director here to ask that question. Yeah, it looks like it's primary public works, but it certainly will help the two parks in the area, area because if they're drained, they're usable, and if they're flooded, they're not. Well, this goes before a number of other boards as well, so I'm sure it's going to get vetted well enough. Yeah, I guess I would, I'll make a motion to approve resolution R. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second by David. David. Good. Any further discussion on the motion? Yeah, sorry, just like, I think Patrick hit it exactly where at least it'll make the parks more usable, that that all sounds positive from a parks perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although, Hearing no further discussion, voting on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. All opposed? Motion carried. Thanks, Scott. So we are down to communications. Yep, and, and I wanted to, to let the Park Commission know that the uh, R14520 construction of the pickleball courts did uh, did fail at the at the count, common council, so that project won't be um, undertaken at this point. Uh, we are looking to 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 rebid rebid the project um, oh. and see. That's a question that I have. Is it just a rebid of exactly what was designed, or is this backing up to, well, for the first time, open it up for some public uh, input, and for the first time, I will emphasize, park commission input into that design. And another point I wanna make on this, I really hope it would be kind of up for consideration of redesign because I heard the comments of the council members, um, various you know, objections to various things in this. Uh, I also have a concern because there's two separate projects here, that $2 million, $2 million uh, water main and storm sewer or something or other contract that we approved a couple months ago. The water main loop is going into the ground right now as we speak this week, it started already. And I want to ask you a question to make you worried, hopefully. Uh, do you, Scott, and uh, Tracy Foss and Thomas Balwig, are you sure the water main loop is going in the right place? Because if the, curry, if the uh, uh, pickleball courts are moved at all, that water main will be underneath, could be underneath the um, pickleball court. So uh, these projects, these two different projects here should have been coordinated closer together. Uh, we, we did Before we go on to, into this too far, I would like you to summarize what, what, do, do, what you're what, doing in communication so right, we yeah. understand 
first of all, what's going on? Yep. As Patrick mentioned, the water project is going forward. It, it, the project's going to be the same. It's just going to be instead of a lump sum, there's going to be a base bid for the pickleball courts and then potentially alternates for the support facilities. The, we haven't quite decided how we're going to do that yet, but for the, the parking lot would be an alternate. The, uh, the, the, the paths could potentially be a, an alternate, but the, the concern that was raised at the council level is that, and, and Sarah can interject here also, that the CIP said $320,000 and the project came in at, well, 600,000, but 50,000 of that was 10% contingency, so the project came in at 540,000. And I tried to explain that you know, the pickleball court was just a piece of the development of the park and we're trying to, you know, within one fell swoop, try to get the, the park developed, which includes a, a pickleball court, but also, you know, the paths and things to make the other portions of the park accessible and usable and, and those kinds of things. So, it, so our hope is that we can rebid it. We'll do the base bid to fall within the, the CIP of $320,000 and then the the balance of the of the project would come through park improvement dollars and fee in lieu of parkland dedication. Is there is there <clears throat> excuse me is there a feeling that making them alternates gives them the ability to to cut them out of the project if they feel it's too expensive? Right, right. Yeah. And so in, in that that's what it, it allows for. It allows for you know to pick and choose pieces of pieces of the specific project. Who's going to make those decisions? Then would it come that, back? That'll be, that'll be the council. Would you know? It'll it'll be bid. It'll be referred from the council to the park commission. So you'll be able to weigh in on your recommendations, and then it'll eventually get to the to the common council for their final final vote. I would ask our uh, representative Alder to make sure it gets to the park commission. Yeah, I haven't heard. This is the first update I've received from Scott. I knew um, the conversations about the budget. Uh, I was very surprised by uh, just that people were, uh, like Scott said, it failed and it was failed. The only kind of feedback we received is just the budget aspect. So uh, yeah, definitely if I hear more, I'll have it referred to parks. I I don't have anything else at this time. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll get it uh, rebid and then, then we'll, you know, with engineering, we'll draft the referral and the resolution and get it to the council and make sure it comes back to parks. So really, it would be rebidding something for next year, correct? Yeah, we're looking to right. We're looking to get this bid by the end of the year so that we can we can get still get it built in twenty twenty one, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Is that too early? To just I don't know. But. No, no. We we'll we'll have plenty of time. We're we're actually going to be meeting in October with the engineering department to try and figure out how we can carve it up, but the, the, the bidding documents that we have, the engineering drawings are, are the same. It's just gonna be a matter of a base bid and then alternates and, and those kinds of things. So the document is there. It's just a matter of re repackaging it into different, you know, like I say, base bids and potential alternates and then getting it out to bid. Well, okay, assumably it could be repackaged into other projects, but I would hate to see it end up Cost you more in the long run. I, I I I would agree. But what you just hopefully uh, not. What you just said is is my point about uh, if it is just the very same engineering, or if it allows for public input, park commission input, and a redesign, which you know has never been up no. before public uh, input before. Yeah, there's no plan to 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 redesign well, it. There <laughs> should be. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I. Um, spent a few minutes with a Google search on pickleball courts and found that around the United States, many communities have converted uh, and or allowed both multiple use of a tennis court and a pickleball court. And I don't understand why. There was a presentation of a certain number of pickleball courts. There wasn't really any market study there wasn't any supporting documentation that this was the right number of pickleball courts. Before the meeting, Scott, I talked with you about the conversion of tennis courts that 
could be both a tennis court and a pickleball court. You said that the city has done that. Of the tennis courts that we have, how often has that been done? Uh, again, I think this proposal came from left field. I don't think if you go through the doc documentation, there was anything written anywhere that there was a request or a need in the city to have a pickleball court that's part of the park commission um, process. Am, am I correct in that, Scott, or wrong? It, well, the, the, the way the project came to be is the mayor interject, you know, put that into his CIP budget. So at, at that point, it was the, the, the assignment of, the, of staff to put together the, um, you know, the bidding documents and the, and the project to get it built. So that's how it was formulated, I guess, if you would. Well, I, I'm not sure what the role of the Park Commission is. Um, and I don't know, I would expect if many communities faced with the same situation where they have tennis courts, they have a demand for pickleball courts, have found a way to uh, restripe the courts so that you can either play pickleball or tennis, I don't know why a much more serious consideration wasn't given to that. Why do we start with just something new? That's all. I, I agree with the idea. Um, I do know for ones that I know of, Mogawa Park tennis courts and the Swan Creek tennis courts are both striped for, they were tennis courts and they're restriped for pickleball also. also. Uh, I don't know if there's others around the city. Uh, McKee tennis court complex of six, court, six courts is not striped for pickleball. So it's sort of dedicated to tennis. I do like the dual use idea. This one here is a uh, single use. And all you can say is uh, sometimes it pays to be the mayor. The mayor found $320 or $320,000 for eight pickleball courts. Not anything else there. The rest of this is what almost doubled the whole price, which the council really did not like. Scott, you want to? Move on to some of Glen Park Cuddle. Yep, I, I did meet with actually Susan was there and David Haight and uh, our alder, one of the alders, Randy Uttle. Uh, we met uh, on Tuesday and, and at the end of the day, you know, I certainly had a better understanding of how the whole area works. Uh, Randy is going to put together some suggestions and recommendations for us uh, to, to consider and, and hopefully begin to start to get some of his answers and concerns addressed. So, and I don't know if you had something you wanted to add to or? Uh, no, I, I, when, except for to say, even though it's lengthy, if people haven't done so, to read what was already provided to us by David Haight. It's a lot, but it's comprehensive. And he, I'm not sure of his exact profession, but he's in the area. Uh, of uh, understanding engineering enough uh, to have put together something that's quite coherent. And after having him explain all of this as standing in the park, he has a 100% knowledge of what's there and what the problems are. And, so and, and that's and I, much appreciated. And I think we can, I think we're gonna be able to, to do something to yeah. resolve the, the, solve the issues. And then I just, uh, if we wanted to move on, just kind of updated you on some of the park projects that were uh, completed. I know Patrick did uh, provided some additional questions regarding the McKee, uh, McKee uh, work, and I did provide that as part of your, part of your packet. Um, I did uh, also burn. Well, uh, right, second one. Oh, let Scott finish, and then. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the next. But, one. Yeah. Well. Okay. We can we can certainly go to the McKee questions that you may. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you answered the questions. You did miss one question. I, I, did, I didn't answer them. Um, well. Oh, you didn't. No. No. They, these were. This was a project done by the engineering department, so they're the ones that provided the responses. Oh. Okay. Well, there was one down there. Was this fully funded by the forty thousand of the CIP? That one wasn't answered, but. Looking at the numbers, uh, the totals was were within the forty thousand that was allocated. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I see that the total comes out about eight hundred dollars less than twenty-five thousand. Was there some kind of a key 
uh, $25,000 limit where this was possibly, I'm thinking, under uh, a, a limit where this could be just administratively approved? Or no, this was, this was part of a, the, they have a bigger, con, you know, they have a whole street construction and concrete work contract that they put out. And then the, this was just, these were just pieces of, of that project. So was this specifically for McKee for the pavement around the shelter? Was this specifically part of this large citywide concrete bid? It was, it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we do the same thing with, uh, you know, our parking lot, the parking lots that we're gonna be doing and renovating, that's part of the whole city's street paving okay. project. So um, the additional material that you provided, in, including the, well, whoever wrote it, the answers to my questions there and then the um, actual map of the McKee shelter and the actual slabs of concrete on the other page right here. I see uh, it's got Thomas Balwig's um, initials on it there. I also see the date of June. So I'm a little bit annoyed that we did not, uh, the Park Commission here did not hear of this in our July meeting or our August meeting or our September meeting uh, to see that this was going on and this was like in progress being worked on, going to be uh, uh, done here. Um, it's annoying, I think, to see that we only hear about this in our October meeting when we get to see the pretty pictures when it's all done, rather than hearing along the way of what is planned, what is being proposed, what is in the works, what's in progress, what's in construction. Only after it's done we hear about it. We should hear earlier. I, I guess, you know, it was approved in the CIP. It was part of the, the, the work that we were going to be doing in 2020. In 2020. Well, then it should have been in a communication item along the way here. July, August, September. You say in your answer, or somebody answered here, um, the work was completed late August, early September. Why didn't we hear about this in our August meeting or our September meeting? Yeah, I, I left in the dark quite a bit on these kind of things. I don't know if it's because it was under 25000 or maybe it was just part of a bigger project um, uh, bid or something I, like I, that. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep okay, the, the Park Commission informed on, on projects that, that are... That's what I'm saying. We were not informed until this is done. And I kind of, I've looked at this. I saw uh, a lot of the slabs as they were completed like a few days after our September meeting when I went there and just happened to see, hey, there's a lot of fresh concrete around here that's done already. And I am well aware of uh, how much really needed to be replaced. I saw three slabs of concrete by the north door that were uh, un very uneven. They've been that way for at least four or five years or so when Corey Horton was our public works director. I counted 27 slabs that were removed around the north side and then six more for whatever reason, I don't know, I can't figure out, around on the south side of the shelter. Uh, it's sort of... Uh, claims that these were trip hazards. I didn't see any trip hazards around on a whole lot of these, just, you know, minor cracks. Uh, I have a question for you. Is this entirely done here now for concrete replacement? At, at McKee, yes. Okay, because I did count 15 more large slabs on the south side that have hairline cracks. So I'm kind of thinking that a lot of them, these of these that were replaced were just because of cracks, uh, not that, trip that, That's incorrect. They were they were trip hazards, and they're and, and it's really my responsibility to make sure that these facilities are safe. I, you know, I, I, it, it's hard for me to you know keep you up to, to speed with everything that's going on out in the parks department. I guess from my perspective, this project was included in the the CIP. The park commission approved the project, and now what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep. That was you back up. in 2016 that it was a CIP. This has just been left on hold for quite a while. All of a sudden here, it went forward without us knowing anything about it. And I've, I've looked at the concrete slabs there quite a bit. I even went there with you one time and, you know, we discussed it and really, and, and there was again, a few I, slabs I, that needed replaced. And again, I, I, I reserve the right to, to make sure that the park facilities are as safe as they possibly can. And if, you know, if my, in my opinion, and talking with the engineering group and we see trip hazards, I'm gonna get them fixed, Patrick. I, 
you know, and I, I apologize if I don't keep you, you know, up to date on, on all my day-to-day -day activities and what we're doing. Uh, well, this, I mean, you got, I, I will say one thing, you got a really good bid price on this to have, the, to do that much concrete and it still came in under 25,000. Thank you. So we're, we did a good job. Yeah, got, it's got just it fixed. a whole lot of that from what I'm remembering before, which I didn't know was going to be changed versus the after that I see now, it looks like I didn't see that many trip hazards around there. Uh, it looked like replacing just for the sake of cracks. But I don't well, know. I can, I can assure you that I'm, I'm just not going to go out and, <laughs> and replace concrete because they have cracks in them. I think that's, that's what I wanted point, to ask. This is made, done. Points made. Let's, yeah. let's move on. Okay. I, I, that's it? All right. Is there any other... Reports from other departments you want to mention, or well, they are the other there Burn and uh, Terravesa pictures. Yeah. If you wanted to say anything about them, it's below that, I think. Oh, there it is. Is Burn in progress? That, that's correct. Yep. Not complete yet. Uh, not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. You said Terravesa. Uh, I think that's. So the, just so I, yeah, I just the, the burn photo just that you just showed was with a, where the public works department is fixing, a, they're calling it the burn retrofit, fixing up the storm uh, water system there adjacent to the park. So that's what we're looking at? The, the, that's correct. Okay. And they're going to spread some soil out over onto the parkland and straighten it out a little bit. Okay. And, and as you recall, this was brought before the Park yep. Commission, and I'm trying to keep the Park Commission Thank up to speed so with what's going on. So that's it. Um, well, and, and actually, the uh, I'm, I'm back now, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the other pictures are Terra Vesa, uh, pictures of natural area uh, to the to the north, and and actually, what they had to do is they had to um, because they were using the area for, for storage and they, they got rid of all of that stuff and they repaired it. And Can you go back to that? What is that building in the background? That, that's, a, that's a new school, Oregon School. Oh, okay. See, Terra Vesta, if you... Uh, I, I remember that. Well, and actually... I didn't uh, realize I, that they, were, they followed through with it. To, you know, I think it is ready to open in the fall here. Wow. <laughs> Yep, so that, you know, that's the, the natural area to the, um, to the north. Hmm, okay. And these are the big, big oak trees that we got out there. And I'll let you know that the, to report, Patrick, the park and forestry, they're going to work to clean up around those. I don't know exactly when, okay. but. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Scott? Yep, uh, and you know I do have one thing I wanted to talk to you about in my director's report. Let okay. me get to that. Well, let's. Move. Oh, Mark. Oh, director's report. You know, go ahead. Seven D. Could I add one thing as a communication thing here? Oh, what? Uh, could I add one thing? A comment. I, the communication seems like the best place to n mention this. Okay. Uh, on which no. Well, it's it's something I want to just comment on. Oh. Uh, I mean, I could do it in future agenda items or something too, but. Let's do it there. Okay. Scott, you had one other thing you wanted to. I, I yes, I did want to let you know about the inclusive playground project. Uh, it's kind of been on hold at this point because of uh, a piece of it was going to be to go out and try and raise. We do have $130,000 set aside for the, for the, for the playground. Uh, but the idea is that we're having difficulty. We don't feel comfortable going out and trying to raise funds for the, for the additional 130. Uh, so what we are uh, thinking about potentially doing is, is going to the, trying to get an amendment to the, to the CIP to allow us to use that 130 to begin to start to get it developed. Uh, and then, you know, there might be a phase one or a phase two that we would, uh, and we'd have to get a, this approved by the council. 
We, the idea of phase one and phase two then would be built with donations equaling that $130,000 just to try and begin to start to get something going. But just wanted to kind of get your you know, thoughts, if that makes, makes sense, uh, makes sense to you, but it certainly would have to be approved by the council and because they did, they, they said that the 130 can be used once we, once we um, gather $130,000 in, in donations to match it. So I think we'll work to, to try and see if we can't do that. Scott, has there been a plan presented in terms of the, where the, the status of it in terms of uh, physical design? The no, there's no physical design, no. Okay, so there's the, just a designated area. The location, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's all I have, Mike. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Future agenda items. A couple questions about the reports. Go ahead. Um, on, Scott, on your report, uh, director's report, parking lot at 4431 Crescent Road, mm -hmm. What? where is that and what is that about? That is, uh, it's a public, it's a public easement um, that were, that's actually, there's a, there's a, a parking lot there. It's in between uh, two condos and it, it actually goes uh, access to the Cannonball Trail. So there's been some, some questions about, you know, there was a resident who was interested in a sidewalk on that side of the road. Uh, so we're just trying to work through that and looking at covenants and, and things like that just to try and uh, try and work through that. Because the, the, the question is, you know, as, as I'm finding out that they, the, the condos have a, a driveway easement to get access to their condos, but it's on public park land. Um, it's on public park land? It, they, they have, a, yeah, they have an easement. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, you know, then it, then it, begins to start to talk about maintenance and, you know, snow plowing and all of those kinds of things, so. Talk about Seminole Village, correct? Uh, which, which condos are we talking about? Well, this is uh, the, the ones on Crescent, on Crescent Road. Oh, okay, okay. Where's Crescent Road? Wrong side of the park. Crescent, Crescent Road is, you know, Seminole Highway. Yep. Yeah. Seminole Highway, and then you, you turn, <laughs> you turn left. Starts at Alley Drive. <laughs> Lost already. Yep, yep. All right, somewhere. I can, uh, what I'll do is I'll send out some, I'll send out a map and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was wondering also on uh, Joran's report, there's a couple things uh, towards the bottom of his list. Regrade Central Park Place Park. Where is Central Park Place Park? Is that, that any chance in, in the uptown? That or, that is. Uh, or North Park? Actually, what it is, is if I get to my that's, park names. That's too far. Oh, is it? It's in the Nine Springs. You know where the, the new fire station is? Yep. So it's, it's to the south of that. You know, there's the new fire station. There's a, a park that's right adjacent to that. Then we got uh, Syene Road Park yeah. to the west. Yeah, this is, uh, it would be Uptown Crossing South. Uptown Crossing North is oh. by, the, by the new fire station. Uptown Crossing South is to the south of that. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a. So does it have an unofficial name at this point? Or? It has an unofficial name of Uptown Crossing South. Okay. Right, it's still in the Nine Springs development. I know where the new fire station but is. But also sure known what. as Central Park Place. Is that what we're saying? Oh, is this like close to the railroad tracks? Well, it's, yeah. We took a, the Park Commission took a tour a couple of years ago and we drove to a place. There was nothing even built there yet. Yeah. But you pointed out an area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, all right, that gives me an idea. And then the next, painting and rebuilding signs, what signs, park signs? Park ID signs, yeah. Okay, That's the ones with the posts and the name across, mm -hmm. so Jaren is doing that? Uh, actually, Chad, Chad Siegel from the rec department is doing that. Okay, because that was a discussion item, well, I don't know, if last year or the year before maybe, we about did, yeah. replacing, rebuilding, yeah. and we, uh, repainting signs. We didn't, we didn't. We weren't allocated the dollars, so we're kind of taking it upon ourselves to do it in-house. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. All right, thank you. 
and, and that was, you know, with Chad and Austin out in the parks, it's really, it allowed us to do that. They, they got all the picnic tables painted. You know, we were able to do a lot of, a lot of cleanup, that's for sure. I saw that, yeah. Any other future agenda items you can think of, Scott? Or? I do me, no, no. Okay. Any? Uh, yeah, I've got one I want to mention here. Then. Um, on Tuesday, I talked with a, a group, a couple of leaders of a group. They were in McKee Park, and they have RC cars, radio-controlled cars, and they laid out a temporary racetrack of sorts on one of the, uh, the sand areas of one of the baseball fields there in McKee. And I didn't know what they were doing. I asked what that was going to be, and they explained they were going to do a race, a race of RC cars that evening. I started talking with them, and they were very. They said they were very interested in leasing for revenue to the city uh, some kind of a an area that they could make a more permanent racetrack. It, and as I understand it, and talk with them. It would be a n not an exclusive area for them because all they're interested in is give them 100 square feet of grass and they can carve out, think Indy 500 race course, you know, goes around like this and everything, but that's paved. All they want is to just make it bare dirt on the driving lanes around in some sort of a race course. So obviously anybody else could play across it, walk across it, anything like that, but they would have this... Uh, I guess two or three feet or something wide of dirt race course around through the grass in this maybe 100 f square foot area, they are willing to pay to have the rights to create it there, maintain it there, and so it would be revenue to the city. And it sounded good to me, and I, I hope they will pursue this and be in contact with you, or I told them they can get a hold of me too. Um, and I'm sure, you know, somewhere... It, there, you know, McKee would be fine if they could find some place in the grass that wouldn't interfere with anybody else. Uh, McGaw, they didn't know where McGaw was. I explained it was, and they really liked that. They really said anywhere in any park that they could have somewhere and pay for the use of it and like that. So it sounded good, and it would be an a interesting new sport. We'll, we'll wait to hear from them. Okay. All right. Anything else? Hearing none, new business. No new business. Announcements, the next two park commission meetings, November 5th and December 3rd. So now we need a motion to adjourn. Anxious to leave. I move that the meeting be adjourned. Okay, second. I'll Is second. Going? I'll second. Okay, thanks. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? It's motion carried. Nine o'clock.